Can you see if we can get it closer? Yes. Peace up, cheese before the blast had come. Ich habe es nicht mehr. Ich habe es nicht mehr. Ich habe es nicht mehr. Ich Is it weak or not? In the music as well. Can you? Oh, my microphone. Oh, my phone's not working. Wait. Oh, it's something in there. Okay. No, we can hear you talking. I know. Thank you. Good, good, good. My phone is working. It's good to know. Is my tea in the place? Oh, two minutes early. Oh. Of that. What a dull track. I love your music, but this one's like a little quiet, but pensive, I'm not so sure. So. Death on the Western Front, that was there. By Black and Black. It was a one more track, just let people have a chance to log in. And join us, there is so much stuff tonight. <laughs> oh my goodness. I think there's 20 different stories, I think. Arnie's in the chair doing production. Still not completely taking over because next week that's going to happen. That is going to happen where he does all screen shares, the whole thing. As we know, um, I didn't get my bits ready. <laughs> I only had the stories ready well, half an hour ago. There's so many coming in. So you can hear me over the music, all right? Yep. Oh, yeah, Loud yeah. Clear. Loud and clear. Well, that's good, isn't it? This is actually Baron's favourite, I think. Oh, no, it's the oldest one's his favourite, isn't it? The Harley takes about it. Yeah, very good. Right, good to see you up there. Hello, Jordan. Good to see you again. Patrick Jones. Hi, Ross. Whoa, it's growing so fast. Mark. Oh, we've been looking forward to it all week. Oh, that's lovely to hear that. Craig and Thomas, hello. Hugh Evans, yay. Arnie for Sensei every turn. Yeah, he didn't like having his seat get warm for him by his little brother last week. Brown Dark 
Oh, I guess proud of poor bless me, Alan. Proud of all good afternoon, everybody. Oh, good evening, I suppose. Excellent, thank you, Alan. Alan Griffiths. Hi, Ross. Hi, everyone. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you, Jonathan. Good to know, isn't it? Luke Davis, evening. I've got this one. <laughs> what does that mean? Got what? Got this one covered. Got the album. There is so much to like. I'm going to try not to drift over this time. I was told off. Told last week. Half an hour's up. You just got to get off, all right? That's the end of it. Whether you're finished or not, it probably takes so much. Right, and also, uh, we have got some speakers lined up for next week, though. Ah, what a tease, eh? We're trying to get all out for this week. Where did the week go so busy? Ah, where did we start? My goodness. I'll give you a little quick clue so far people are still logging in. Ah, uh, got some Trojan War updates. Google Translator of Pirates here. It's all these stories. These are not mine. These are posted on the Facebook group or emailed to me or just come across during the week. The Garth Observatory video. So we've already seen that. Something about the Bolivian manuscript, which Patricia mentioned. Equinox dates. I am very interested in this. Nicky Griffiths brought that up. It was quite a discussion. I just thought it was automatically everyone agree what the day of the Equinox was. Isn't it amazing what we find there? Alright? And it does tell you what we're doing here, of course, and all the star mounds, what kind of stuff. A few words about that. Ooh, this is where I have to stop the music now. Thank you very much. Look at that. Fading it out like a pro. And, oh, can you see me? How's the leg, says Robert Pierce. Yeah, yeah. Uh-oh. Oh. Has, it, has it frozen? Yeah, it's frozen. Oh, look at that. You think it'd be so cool. What a great freeze. <laughs> People say I never keep my mouth shut. Well, there you go. Look, there, there Just change is... the frame and change it back. Change the frame and change it back. What does that mean? Change it to um, All right, you in the corner and change it back. I'll just go to... Will that work? All right, I'll just do the deactivate back to me. There we go. Is that wonderful? And we have a... Yeah, that's good. <laughs> oh, unsafe settings. Oh, God, I hope so. All right. Hello, 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 hello. Yes, as Robert Pierce said there, I hope my legs are okay. I stopped this music. Baron, take the hint. We love your music, but now you have to stop from it, okay? Do 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 do. You are supposed to stop. Anyway, okay, well, oh, here we are, here we are. Right. So I get my computer gets very laggy, and these things take a while. I can't go through the list while well, that music finally realizes it shouldn't stop by now. So the Equinox discussion, yeah, Robert Pierce is saying there, we went all the way up Dinneth, uh, Manith Dinnis yesterday. Oh man, that was hard, and it rained, and it was thinking fog and clouds and miserable. And today it's just glorious sunshine. And what's going on with the weather forecast at the moment? They said the forecast yesterday was quite good, forecast today was for terrible. We're supposed to go to someone's uh, barbecue, in the family, all that kind of stuff. Um, the weather was so, forecast is so bad we stopped. I've also got Dixie's request about Caddock in Merthyr. Going through this, Richard Davis shared a map with us. Uh, 1579 Dictionary, Paul Buchanan talking talking about talks. I need to slow down. Dave Wolf, I do have trouble with your name, Dave, I'm really sorry. Dave Wolf, Scale, all is Arnie. Hello, Arnie, give us a wave. Hello. Uh, which is about um, Egyptian, uh, well, the Hick Hyksos, really. Which Wilson and Blackett say are the pre runners to the Brits and the migrations. If I get through everything, something about Colburn, I did promise Weldall next week that is going to be a separate uh, video because I want to do a proper introduction how it works and you can do it. You know, it's not that difficult. Oh, yeah, something from Cambria Triumphants. Taran Doysad, Tim took me earlier in the week. I've had a busy week. So, oh, great flood theory. Do I share my great flood theory? I don't know. Alright, has everyone had a chance to get on? Plenty of people watching. Uh, Mark, hello Mark. Hello Richard James. Right, okay. Ah, Paul Hartel here. Under a, under a pseudonym. Hello, Paul Hartel. Editor of my book. And he's someone who has been doing uh, these things with Wilson and Blackett for decades. Met them all. Adrian Gilbert. Um, uh, Chris Barber. Been up there, got the T-shirt. He probably makes the T-shirts, and he's been trying to. He shared a video with us 
from a visit probably late back in the 80s. No, that's not that's unfair. Uh, 2000s. And hopefully lots more from Paul. So welcome. Good to hear we've got so many all the way from California. I know we usually have a couple of viewers from Australia. At least one from two from New Zealand and all over the world. It really is quite exciting. Right, okay. I'm going to dive in straight away. First one is... Do, 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 do. Oh, I shut this down. Anyway, I think everyone's now seen the Trojan Wars. Um, what do you call it? The cover that was on there. And the new blurb, which I just want to read out quickly. Just for those who haven't seen this. And this is where I need my computer working a bit quicker. Come on, I've got it already. Here it is. So I'm going to have to remember next time, print things out is better. Because my computer sometimes plays up with all this stuff going on. Right, okay, come on, come on, come on, come on. Just let me, what, okay, I can almost see it. Right, so the this is the introduction, because I've been doing the book, I have to say something about it, because I have been doing the Trojan War book a bit of a disservice. I've been saying, ah, oh, it's one of these crazy Wilson and Blackett books where two-thirds is about something else. It's almost page 300 before you get to the Trojan War. And because I'm so into hieroglyphs, I just dived more or less in, okay? But as I did the index, I realised what the book is really about and what it really is is explaining how British history has been covered up and that's the theme of today's show how it's been covered up okay what we had is um, and this started back earlier than I thought I mean parts of it I mean in the introduction here I put it down to Hanoverians I would, I would screen share this my computer's having a bit of a fit at the moment uh, but it seems to go back even before that. I've got a little piece from uh, Percy Enderby's Cambria Triumphants to read out. Okay, so what the book actually does, it explains as much as you can in one book how much how British history used to look before so much was changed in the early 18th century, okay? Before Edward Lloyd came up with this idea that their Welsh, Scots and Irish were all Celts and this concept of British barbarism and dark ages. So what the history we learn in school now, we go to a Welsh school or an English school, is that before the Saxons, we basically had the dark ages, where no one knows anything, um, which is bizarre, because it's one of the, most, one of the best recorded uh, periods in history. There's literally thousands and thousands and thousands of documents. And even though there's been deliberate attempts over the years, like, uh, so, uh, Scalarius to destroy these and destroy the Welsh records, the language, the books, the education system, everything. There are still tens of thousands of documents. You've got the Harlia manuscripts, you've got the St. John's uh, manuscripts. But there must be a lot more in the British Museum than we realise. And the uh, University of Wales, if you can work out to get in there, must have loads of Welsh stuff as well, okay? So, it's so what I've written out there. The description of the book Trojan War is not a big dive, not them rambling and diverting like, like I seem to do all the time now. So it's catching. What it does is give a summary of British history right the way back from the migration, right into even medieval times. You know, story of William Wallace, things like that, how it ties in with the Scottish succession, which I notice is also in Cambria Triumphants. All right, so here's the, the new blurb for the book. If you haven't got a copy yet, they will be. It should be two weeks now. We're waiting for the proof, so everything's looking good. A strange thing happened when the Hanoverians of Germany were placed on the throne of England. The British history that had been accepted and written about for centuries began to re be replaced a manic version of events. The English people were convinced to forget their British roots and instead become Germanic Anglo-Saxons. The Welsh, Scottish and Irish were also to lose their glorious pasts and be told that they came from primitive Celtic tribes. This campaign of misinformation was so successful that few people today are even aware that these changes ever happened. Wilson and Blackett spent decades piecing together the old historical records and physical evidence and now take us on a startling journey through British history and how it has been hidden and distorted. And then there's a little bit more. Oh, it's finally opened up for me. I could screen share that even. Just quickly. 
Uh, the ancient British writing, writing system is then traced back along the migration trail to Troy and ancient Egypt, where we discover when and why the Trojan Wars were fought and who the famous characters such as Agamemnon and Helen really were. This history strikes at the very heart of how Britain and British people see themselves and the reader will soon realise why so much effort, effort I should say typo, continues to be put into keeping it suppressed. All right, so you can read it from the top for yourself there. It's all about the hiding and suppression. Uh, the comments coming up on, I can't see them from here. Oh, what, what, what was that? I didn't... Ah, here we go, the chat just disappeared a second. Right, okay, cool. So, hang on, so that's another one of my list, that's all coming along. Um, the the index is now nine pages, I got a bit carried away. But what I was going to do, not enough time tonight, show, was give some examples, show a bit of the index. Okay, on, just quickly, just quickly, please. just quickly, yes. <clears throat> I will slowly, slowly, you can have a look yourself, just to get an idea. Just gives you a first, uh, just see all the different names. You get an idea of how much is in this book. We're just on A, right? This is just letter A. And we've got things like ancient Greeks, like Archonaton, and however you're supposed to say that, according to British Library, Ancus, Benarton. And then things like British stuff, like Arthurston, uh, Bishop Austin, Augustine, as he's also known, or the Bees, various writers like Balliol, who King Barham is, and where he's buried, and it, it goes on and on and on and on and on. And on. So, um, there's just tons in this book, all right? And only a third of it, I would say, is actually about the Trojan War. And of course, if you haven't seen it already, there's a guide to reading hieroglyphics in there. <coughs> Who everyone was, the Egyptian dynasty is massive. Right, anyway, move on, move on, move on, move on, move on. This is what, to, this is what I'm hoping. I'll hardly be taking over next week. You'll be getting the screens ready for the next bit. Uh, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a little, two little funny ones. First of all... Oh my goodness, what's the odds of me getting this right? I think I'll just go through with the old link up, shall I? That might be the easiest. Uh, oh, I've got it right straight away. Yep, yeah, here we go. How about this a funny one? But, uh, who sent this one in? Oh no, I didn't write them in the name. Oh, I do apologise. Someone put this uh, up in the Facebook group this week. I thought it was brilliant. I think it was Dixie, wasn't it? Was it Dixie? You get a mention anyway tonight, Dixie. I think it was you. So there we go, BBC News. So, um, this is just fantastic. I, d I don't know how this is supposed to work. I don't know. Because <laughs> I, I know that, well, I, know, I know, get to know the official way of translating as well as anybody, and there's a lot of context and options and things, so I can stick it in. I do not know. But this says, according to their glorious festival of your delivery. Bizarre. Anyway, if you look at the original of this symbol, this is um, fruitful. It's little flowers and stuff growing out of the ground. So it's a fruitful earth. Then proclaimed, this is two strokes, it's doinod. I think this is probably a mouth, can't tell from these badly drawn graphic graphics. It's the one who notes, and then we've got um, duty to give, and then he's an heir, a sky, a scion or a scion, he is, and it's in the records. So it means absolutely nothing like what they've done there. I thought it was quite amusing. Oh, we stuck that one up. All right. Oh. And, oh, I'm going to see my screen share now. Do you want to be seeing that? Let's go on one a second. And the next one. Right. Um, okay, I'm going to jump forward a bit because I've just discovered one. Now, one issue in the Star Mounds this week. <laughs> you can never get too far carried away with an index. Yes, thank you, Paul. Yeah, I know you love an index. Paul, my, my editor, cracking the whip on my hieroglyphics book about References, 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 index, index, index. And he's quite right. And the lesson has stuck. Okay. Now then, did you realise, I didn't know till this week, if someone said to me, when is the equinox? It's that day, twice a year, two days a year then, when the night and the day are equal. 12 hours, 12 hours, okay? So in the Northern Hemisphere, I always thought that was September 21st, 22nd, that night. And in the summer, June 21st, okay. And Nikki Smith, I think it was, mentioned this. All my orders all over the place now. Uh, I'm sure it's Nikki Griffiths. I do apologise. Here we are, Nikki Griffiths. Well, I didn't know. And thank you also to Ellis, also a good grandee, 
for explaining. It's not simple. As, it's not so simple as that, apparently. How can that be? Surely, must know what day is going to be the same, uh, the day and the night. But there are different ways of looking at it. You can count the number of days. You can count the number of weeks. This is a site I've been recommended, archaeoastronomy.com. And I'm not going to go through all this uh, today because, quite frankly, I don't quite understand it yet. But what I would like, please, uh, and I really, really want help on this. It's an appeal for help. When we're doing our observations for the equinox, which will be in September, well, all these dates seem to be within a few days of each other, right? It's not like it's suddenly in summer or spring or something. The idea is then, I want to know which dates to measure the alignments of the starmans to work out exactly what is pointing where. Like, for example, you might have seen popped up a video about the Garth Mountain a couple of days ago. Was it yesterday even? <clears throat> it was shot a couple of months ago. I'm trying hard to catch up with posting videos. There are loads to go up. Just need editing and posting. I'm going to concentrate on that for a while. The, the idea was there that what Hugh had spotted was below, uh, I think I called it wrong in the, the fulcrum, frostrum, sorry, I called it wrong in the video as well, frostrum. It's like a mound that's been cut off, and you stand there and you observe. And if you look on the video, what you'll see is two trenches. So one is more or less south and one is more or less east. That's not the crucial information, I don't think. Maybe it is. We need to look more at it. we got this shape, the point, from where you stand, that seems to be sending a line uh, directly east. And then, or, or at certain points. And then this would seem to tie in with Orion. Maybe the three mounds of the belt of Orion. Uh, where Orion rises. I know we're trying to work it all out, okay? But <clears throat> one of the things Hugh is quite interested to notice is that it could be a lunar calendar. And the idea there is that if you've got a trench, uh, if, if, if you look at the night sky, the moon doesn't always appear in the same place. I know most people know this already, but you know, I've never really thought about it much. So I'm going to explain. So this is our trench. We'd have it so this end is the most the sun the moon's gonna be that away and then every day come across dink 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 this is gonna be the full moon and dink 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 you're back to crescent moon that's gonna be that extreme so if you stand here we're trying to check would these points correlate with the moon but I'm also wondering if it's um possibly a sun observatory as well as you see in the video I go along to the ends of the trenches <clears throat> I'm trying to work out the exact alignments, but where exactly do you stand? Because the thing's been more or less destroyed now. You can see roughly where the mound is. Where's the exact point to stand? Because if you move a bit, it changes a bit. Which also makes me wonder then about the distant hills and peaks you can see all around Somerset. So maybe if that's a far more accurate way to do it. It wouldn't matter then if you moved around the, the mound a bit. You could just line it up on one of those distant points, and that would be your whatever it is, yeah, the highest point of the sun. Now, for example, oh, no, um, so I can remember it. I think the sun comes up to, I think it's 52 degrees, so that's above east <clears throat> by, well, if east is 90 degrees, that'd be 38 degrees above east. Um, I want to check that on the right day. What is the right day? Okay. So I'm hoping you clever people out there can explain to me and if someone wants to do a little video explaining this is the um, equinox and this is why, I'd be very pleased. And there's been quite a discussion about this. <laughs> it's like, I didn't even know it was a subject. So isn't it wonderful uh, doing this kind of thing? All right. Uh, pop, pop, pop. Okay, so I'm just going to go like that. Hide what I'm doing now. Put the curtain back down so I can twitch away behind it in true Wizard of Oz, Oz fashion. Yeah, yeah, this is the one. If I'd, um, ah, don't do that to me. Yeah, this is uh, this is what I really like. <laughs> and it's just a little one here. I was going to do this as the graphics on the beginning, but I was running a little bit slow. I don't want to spoil the comments on the side, but you can have a look. What does this look like? It's a tree. It's amazing. And Alan Williams, thank you very much for this. I don't know any more about it yet, but I'd love to know more. I've never seen a tree like that. The idea is these are dragon's feet, look. So uh, that's just a bit of a random one I've thrown in there. Oh, there we go. Take that off. <laughs> so that quite tickled me as well. Okay. Right. Now, we're going to get to the, more back onto the cover-ups now, which is the big thing tonight.
And oh, why is my computer not? Oh, because I went full screen, didn't I? What do I do now? Ah, that one. Oh, you really think you've got the hang of this? The limitations short, don't they? Right, okay, what's next? Uh, no, I want to come back to that. All right, I'll jump into this one since it's here. Cover ups is going to be the main theme now, okay? Come on, laggy computer. Yeah, this is an interesting one. Thank you very much for this. Another member of the Britain's Hidden History Group, who is Joseph Roberts. Hello, Joseph. Hope you're watching. I hope you're interested in the hieroglyphs. And he's a language person, so I'm very keen for him to become more and more involved in this. And he's got a quick plug for him. It's called the Pi, I think it is. P-A-I or R-A. I think it says on there. Oh, yeah, down the bottom. Here we are. Pi language learning. You can learn Welsh and various other languages. Okay. And what struck me as interesting was the names for the different countries. I wanted to bear this in mind, okay? Because this is not Wilson and Blackett. It's not ancient. It's not anything. This is what's still taught now, all right? So if you don't know Welsh, you're not aware of Welsh, these names still exist, all right? In Wales, England is still called Floiga. Double L, Floiga, okay? Scotland is still Ur Alban. Wales is still... Cymru, okay? And there's a few other places there. Llyndine, <coughs> which E.O. Gordon would suggest Llyn is from Lake, and Dine is holy or something, so London was a holy lake. Very ancient name. And you see a lot of these names here have got Welsh equivalents, which predate them, we would argue. Okay, so have a look at that. I thought it was interesting. Uh, just made me... Um, so that's one there. Yeah. If anyone online is looking now, I'm trying to look at the Oh, sorry, yeah, I should give people some feedback. No, no, let's finish this one, then we'll do a bit of feedback. Uh, like Isle of Wight, for example, Anis Wyth in Welsh. Because Wight, I don't think it means a lot in English. Perhaps it's a translation of the Welsh, but that's me guessing a bit, shouldn't I? I shouldn't do that. What I'm trying to do is provoke people to think and explore. If I cover enough topics, hopefully somebody catches your interest, you think, oh, I know something about that. I am going to look into it more. Right, quick look there. I know how we do with um, frustrum. Thank you, Hugh. I always trouble with that word. Frustrum. Oh. F R U S. What's that? Oh. Oh. A strange cat that just came in eating our cat's food. Great. So, frustrum. R F R U S T U M. Frustrum. It's a co with top chopped off. Thank you. So, why am I having so much trouble learning that one? And, oh, S E. I think. Hugh's saying at that point was pointing southeast. Well, we need to check all those things. Right, so Patricia Gilcash is explaining the axial procession is one degree every 72 years to 23 degrees each way. So there has to be variations, right? Ross, try using the app Sky Guide to measure. Okay, Mark, can you give me a little bit more about Sky Guide? I imagine this involves me schlopping up the garth at dawn or something. But what I really want to know is that date. I'm going to go up there at dawn and check exact. I want to know exactly where the sun is on dawn, on the solstice. But what day is that? <laughs> There's no point you can up on the wrong day, is it? All right. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so that's that one there. All right, okay. Now then, another one came up from Podrick Jones. i got to speed up. I've got to speed up. I've got to speed up. i got to speed up. All right, I'll just do these in the order. Hit them now, okay? I think that's what I'll do. Oh, yeah, another one. Dun, 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 dun. Come on, computer. Right, if you ever hear this place, Taran Doisant, this is just a one minute thing. Put a video up during the week. Thank you very much, Tim Lewis. He came round and said, um, Hey, I'm going up to Taran Doisant. Let's go. It's really close. It's like four miles from my house. Walking distance from the school I was at, my secondary school, or high school, for those in Americans, or those in Britain who like to use American words. Secondary school, still to me. Taran Doysan, really spiritual place. I'd say that's probably the best picture. It's it's remarkable. It's it's wonderful because you've got the sort of shelter of the rocks, the trickling stream behind you, and you can see the carvings and things. And it's another example which has been covered up because unless you knew it was there, you would not find it. There is not a single clue. There is even a footpath that goes near it, and there's little signs saying footpath, and it's like um, I know some. <clears throat> historical footpath, whatever it is, but it's still not a, not a mention, okay? So there's Tarrant Doysan, video coming out on that one as well. And similarly, I'm trying to get your bit up here, please. Yes, well done me, come on. 
this is the other thing that Dixie sent me. He's noticed, and I, I did spot this, but didn't register. So you need someone to... Once I say this to you, like Dixie said to me, it'll register, and then you notice it. This, oh, this is Garth there, but this is actually up in uh, Mertha, or Mercha, as we think it might should be, really, but Mercha, Mertha. There's a lot of references to Maddox. There's this... And of course, there are Maddox in the in the Welsh uh, royal family history tree. You got Maddox is the one who's said to have led the ships to America, for example. That's a Maddox, okay. And if you look on the map there, hopefully you can see it. Can we see it right on? Yeah, we can see it. We've got. Uh, is there anything come up on there? Pardon? Also, I just wonder if you spotted anything particular coming up. No, not really. Okay, the axial procession was the last one, wasn't it? So. Why is there's an awful lot of Maddox stuff in Mercha? Mercha, sorry, <laughs> I slipped into that habit now. So, people, I only got there again. We've also got uh, Craig. Uh, keep meaning to give Craig a call. He's the one who took me up that hill in the rain. We've got more places to go. It's been so busy, I haven't done it yet. My fault. Does he know more about why there's so many places called Maddox in? In um, there's not just this one. It's just one example. I notice on street signs, and I think it's a school and all sorts. So. Please, if you're from Merthyr, you know anything about that, something's going on here, and it doesn't seem to be mentioned on any of the tourist information that I can see. So again, what's going on? What's being covered up here? Or is it just forgotten? You know, may not be, uh, might not be anything sinister, might just be a fact that um, no one knows. <laughs> oh, when I, when I, I'm going to get to the main theme in a second. I just want to try and cover off a few of these. This is a huge, heavy article, which um, I just wanted to just throw it up there. Just uh, you, you should be able to find this if you search it. It's on the Hope of Israel, Hope Dash of Dash Israel dot org, and I mention it because this talks <clears throat> from a completely different perspective about Israel's trek westward, as it says on the screen there. And what they're doing there, they're tying in uh, Israelites with. The Medians and Persia and stuff like that. And it also goes, this little heading there that will speed at the top is more recent. But if you go back and scroll through it all, obviously I'm not going to cover it all now, it does mention a lot more about the migrations that uh, the work of Olson and Blackett cover and before them, people like Percy Enderby and back through the echoes of time, Shakespeare, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> Um, and if you look in here, I notice we got the second portion that you got Chimerians are mentioned in this text. And they look at this, look at this. The second portion of the Chimerians turned south around the west end of the Black Sea and crossed into the, or crossed the Bosphorus. So that means that, uh, I'm sure you know that, the Bosphorus is the, the body of water by Troy. So that takes you from the Middle East, well, into Europe, technically, but, um, you know, I says here, they terrorised Lydia, but eventually expelled the Lydian king, Alietes, 569 BC. See, so we're in the right time frame. Although what, what was interesting about this, and I like people to think about it as well, is that this would put their movement, here we go again, Kimeroi, that Alan Wilson talks about, the Greeks, who dwelt in the Crimean district. So the dates would seem to match. My only concern was that, according to this, they arrived there slightly too late. But I'd love people to read this. I know it looks daunting and dull. And it, it's not. It's not really honest. Oh, it's not. Well, okay, it's a little bit. <laughs> because on and on and on and on. And then, that's it, right? It's only really a few pages. Okay. One huge page. So please have a look, because it's yet a sort of... A, it seems to be that um, more support for most of this story is coming from possibly unexpected sources. Uh, and that's... Uh, Great discussion point. What they don't do is say where they went, of course. That, unless I haven't really studied this, but I, I didn't notice where they actually talk about the Cymri or the Kimeroi or the Kimerians, all these different names they've got there. Oh, there you go. Hey, one thing which strikes me whenever I see that Kimerians is it's like detour. Do you ever think about um, the, do you ever read the Conan the Barbarian books, right? This freaks me out. I think, well, I'd love to have the time of the day. So if I wants to do a fun project, you could have loads of fun writing it. The research, I don't think, would be that onerous. It wouldn't be much to do. Is Conan the Barbarian. My own son's called Arnie, right? As in the, the movie. It wasn't thinking the Conan film, but anyway, it is Arnie in the film. Where my family are from, 
where my dad was born and I spent half my childhood, a place called Abba Canon. And Canon is supposed to be the Welsh for Conan. So we're going to have a Conan up there. And the, if you read the, 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 um, the Conan books, he's a, what's called a Sumerian. But it's a, if you call it Kimerian, then you got the question then. So I keep, I'm puzzling myself for years now. Is Conan Welsh? <laughs> if he's a Kimerian, or he's the Kimeroi, and that prehistory, and it's a good excuse to read through some of the Conan books again. If we're a little fun topic, who knows where it could lead? Because there are a couple of Canons and Conons in Welsh history. So even that's not certain, and where the name of the river comes from. Because the river Canon, Abba Canon, Abba meaning confluence, yeah, where the Canon joins the, it's not the Taff at that stage. Oh, might get a taff. Anyway, it's just up there. So there you go. How about them onions, eh? I want to see if uh, Conan, uh, Conan the Kimri, or the Kimri, the Kimerian. Right, I've got to move on, because I want to get onto the thing. Right, oh yeah, buy in the 1759 dictionary, even older Welsh dictionary. People ask me where to get dictionaries from. One I found. Yeah, here we go. Eyes keep right again. I'm going to plug this company. I don't get a penny from them. I don't know them. I ask them about printing my books, and they really are one-off guys. It's not worth doing runs or anything. Anyway, Gian Books, G Y A N Books. I'm trying to find this 1579 William of Salisbury uh, dictionary. It's the oldest one I know of in Welsh. Was it 1587? Something like that. 15 something. So there is the ISBN number. Okay, if you want a copy of your own does help with hieroglyphs. There's not thousands of words there. The 1777 one is probably more useful. And if someone can find me the 1688 dictionary, that's the one I really want. Because Tim Lewis has got it. He helps me all the time with it. I want a copy. Make it up to that number. 9789333163910. And you click it on there. And here we go. A dictionary in English and Welsh, much necessary to all such Welshmen, as will speedily learn, or if you don't learn quite so speedily. There's only 182 pages. It's not enormous. And I think they charge me, God, it's about $14, including postage. So, I know, so about £12 English. Pay with your English pounds, roughly, for that one. All right. Uh, whizzing through. Uh, I hope people like this. I get some feedback. People like this kind of idea of going through all the stories that come up. Uh, I'm going to skip a few of them because I really want to talk about the main thing. Uh, hang on a second. Yeah, the cold one, I mentioned that. Oh, yeah, hang on. I am, I, I've got a couple more to mention. Hang on a second. Bum, 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 bum. One thing that's interesting, I don't know if you're following it, and if you have, please let me know, is in search of the Trojan War, the Age of Heroes, and it's been, this, this goes back a few years, I know I've watched it years ago. Here we are, 2013, it's come up again on our group. And this is following the Irish uh, kind of um, history, if you like. All those kind of things I watch. <laughs> history and chess, there I keep myself going. Um, yeah, so what this is about uh, is there seems to be quite a bit of research going into the Irish migration uh, from Troy. It's about the same era, and it's referred to and it's related, so... Oh, hang on. Sorry, you can't see what I'm seeing. Can you see what I see? Okay, so this is the video in search of the Trojan War, Dash the Age of Heroes. So I watched it years ago. And um, Seed Ramp is quite good. It's quite a while ago. What I'm trying to do is if we can... It's much less sensitive when it comes to cover-ups to say something's Irish than to say it's Welsh. Even Scots isn't so bad. Because you don't have the challenges, as it were, to the English throne and government and establishment. Whereas if you call it Welsh, you do. That's what causes bonds, okay? Right, come on, whiz, 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 whiz. Put some music in, have a break or something. Right, okay. Um, oh, I want to talk about my great flood theory. I've oh, got some maps. Got quite a few more things to show. Done the maps, done that map, done that one. Right, do my best shit. Please bear with me. There's another map. Oh yeah, this map, a light. Oh yeah, yeah, I've got to, I've got to go on to the main thing. All right, so last one I do before the lame one is, this is another map, I love maps. It's from Richard Davis, thank you very much. I know Peter Smith's got great source of maps as well. He's really into maps. What I want people to look at on this one, which is very interesting, is that the Anglians 
are just this bit. Let me see this, okay? Yep, good. See my cursor? Yep, good. Right, the Anglians are just this bit, what we call East Anglia. Because there are a lot of discussion and debate that England is not called after the Anglians at all. It's not Anglia corrupted to English. It's something else. Possibly, as you know, with Senny's, Alan Wilson's, his Senny glass became English or Inglass. And there's other references going further back than that. So it could be any of those things. Mercia, who from what we've read in the history, are not Anglo or Saxon anyway, at this point, I, I, I denoted as holding a big, 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 big chunk of the country. We also got the West Saxons here. And by this is the stage, the Gwissi have now been absorbed. And I was on the Anglo-Saxon Facebook group to, today, and I recommend it. And I'll... Um, Anglo-Saxon language, I think it's called language and something. Marie Hilda runs it. Brilliant. I love the group. You learn so much there. People always been very helpful and polite to me, so it's good. And that's how we exchange knowledge, and that's the way it should be. To be honest, most of the attacks and aggressive stuff I get is from Welsh academics, not English ones. And Saxon academics seem quite open to this, as we'll see in a minute. I'm talking about cover-up thing, okay? A little bit of Wales there. The other thing, or Britain, Cornwall, sorry. The other bit I want to show, even at this stage, 9th century maps are still shown with Strathclyde being in place and this being Pitts. So presumably the Scotty Eye are going to come over there even later than we were having down for. Either that or the Scotty Eye being missed out and the Gales need to come in. So anyway, I'll think about this. Things do always change. Um, and it's far from being an Angle country to make it called Angleland. All right. Just a small one there. Right. Uh, how do I do this? Yes. Right. You're very quiet tonight, Arnie. You know to say? Let's take it all in, yeah? Um, you okay tonight, yeah? No, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, yeah. He's nodding off there. I think, oh dear, as bad as that. Right, okay. Right, what I want to talk about is a couple of stories that have come up this week or over the last couple of weeks about covering up. And I'm thinking, where to start? Right. This is one which, uh, thanks, Al. <laughs> I hope no one near that. Right, now, while I've been on this Anglo Saxon group, some of the people on there are extremely well educated, very polite, very helpful. And one of the things I've been trying to get into discussion with, and they've been open to discussing it, is how much of what is called Saxon history actually is Saxon. And it's no good just. Speaking to um, our side, if you like. I don't like that. I'm trying to find whatever the answer is. I'm not pushing a particular line. I just want people to be open to the fact that we don't really know. And we should be looking at lots of different options. Uh, the Cymru being one. You know, the, uh, the Old English, the Thloigris. All that kind of stuff. The Gwisi. This is why I mentioned the Gwisi. And one of the things that came up on there is this particular book. Which has got a rather long title. So hopefully that comes up okay. I uh, well, this for a catchy title. You know, the months I spent sweating over the title for the new Christian book, which I'll be talking about next week, it's now ready to go to print or for pre-order. Right, anyway, a prehistoric burial mound and Anglo-Saxon cemetery at Barrow Clump, Salisbury Plain, Wiltshire. And this was English Heritage and Operation Nightingale excavations in 20, 2003 to 14. 11 years they were doing this for, right? And then finally, five years later, the book came out and someone was promoting the book and talking about it. I was like, well, that's very interesting. So the first things that struck me about this headline, a prehistoric burial mound. What does prehistoric mean? <laughs> Honestly, it was like, um, I felt a bit bad, but they were very patient with me. And I was, please, 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 always be polite when you go to these other groups and try and engage in conversation. And I find people are very helpful generally. So a very educated person. I don't want to name him because I haven't asked him particularly. But he's very educated. It was to do with me writing the book. But his name's Nachi in the, that list there. So I said, what does prehistoric mean? Is that basically saying that anything before Anglo-Saxon is prehistoric? He's like, no, no, no. This is um, Neolithic. I said, okay, how do they know that then? And so, so first of all, don't be afraid. Another thing. I want to make this point with the Britain's Hidden History Facebook group as well. If you don't know something, or you want to know something, ask. No one will think you're stupid. There's no stupid questions, right? Well, there are, but you know what I mean. So, you can't be afraid to ask. So when he said, for example, oh, it's 
It's either Anglo-Saxon or it's Neolithic. I say, what does Neolithic mean? Does any, do you know? I mean, do you really know what Neolithic means? I bet you if I ask 10 people in this group now to put comments down, which I can't even see, they disappeared again for some reason, um, 10 people probably get six different answers. All right? So I'm just going to give that a minute to let you tick about it. And I'll come back. The name is the same as last week. What's that? Have you got last week's thumbnail and name? Well, name. Yeah, the name at the bottom. I actually don't know how to change that, but uh, people can see on the card. Can they see it's the They can see it's live anyway. I to, yeah, thank you. I need to put the right date on at the bottom. Anyway, um, thanks, Anne. Just throw me all over the place. Right. Neolithic. If you had a chance to think about that for a minute or two, what it means to you? Oh, I don't know what it means. Well, apparently, let's get, get it right. It particularly refers to the third quarter of the fourth millennium BC. Yeah, how many of that, eh? So it's sort of 3,500 to 3,750 BC, apparently. Oh, it's just crazy. There is physically no way you can take anything with that precision, especially something so far back, right? They just can't. And even if you could, how do you know the things in here happen? So, so I was trying to very politely say, well, how does that work, you know? And also, does that mean you're saying then that Bodies and bits of stuff, because they found flints and all these bits and pieces, right? They're not really the crucial evidence we're talking about here. So after 3,500 BC, these mounds were left, presumably untouched, for 4,000 years, or, and a bit more, and, um, until the Anglo-Saxons, or the Anglo-Saxons are, uh, as I've seen a French-German, uh, uh, came and started using it then as, uh, as something else, and we're up to the middle of 4,000 years. You've just completely deleted 4,000 years of history. And uh, after some discussion, the guy was really, really pleasant about it. And he was like, yeah, actually, thinking about the title of the book, could it, could it be, uh, is a little misleading, I, I put it so beautifully, his English is fantastic, um, a little misleading or or not exactly comprehensive, I think he's put it something like that, it was, it was delightful, his use of English. So that was the first thing, okay? Now, going through the whole, going through all of this, all right? What's Anglo-Saxon about? Uh, you can almost take every word apart on this uh, title. I, I must say, one day I would say Operation Nightingale was a great idea. And I I always know why we can't do this more in Wales. So what Operation Nightingale, if you're not aware of it, these were in, injured uh, troops from various wars, judging by the dates, it's probably uh, all that be Af Iraq or Afghanistan. And these are guys who've lost limbs and things, and, it, you know, this has given them an activity, which I'm sure they loved, you know. <laughs> and if you want to ditch, uh, ditch to get a soldier, right, get a squaddy. But, uh, no, seriously, it's wonderful. It's part of the rehabilitation, gives them a purpose, and they've done wonderful work, and a fantastic job, and you've got discipline, organisation, perfect people to do this. And, um, you know, more the merrier. If we can raise some money and get some more, or speak to a charity, anyone's got any contact, please... We have got a stack of places in Wales that are crying out for archaeology to be done. Okay? So that's great, all right? No problem with that. Which is why you have this slightly bizarre front cover of um, this old boy here, supposedly an Angle or a Saxon or an Anglo Saxon, and a modern troop next to him, okay? So that, that did make that makes that sense. Alright, the next thing is and this is why I've mentioned that uh, previous map and some of the other maps, is if you look on there, you will find by the way, if you want to order the book, uh, great. If you want to order me one as well, because I really want to see it, as you'll see why in a minute. I'm not sure if I want to spend £22.50 just to look up a couple of things. So if someone has got it, please have a look. Oh, I did find... Yeah, I'll come on to the next tab in a minute. Right, what I wanted to talk about with this book then was... I will come back to me for a second. That um, this idea of where it is, it's in Salisbury Plain, Wiltshire. Now, Wiltshire, for those paying attention earlier, is where, is that little bit in Wales, well, sorry, the other side of the seven from Wales, we'll use this map, not because anything's on it, just because it gives you an idea, it's here, okay? This is Wiltshire down here, or a little bit further north, sorry, right there. But the point of this is, this is the area known as um, the Gawisse, the Gawisse. Now, something else I also picked up, I think I mentioned it already this evening, in the Anglo-Saxon group, is that Gawisse Bede, the Venerable Bede, the arch, knows everything about history, um, angle, 
who never left Jarrow that one, Venerable Bede, he said the West Saxons, formerly known as the Gwissi. I was stunned. Because this basically says the West Saxons aren't Saxons. Uh, and I, I'd already had this discussion. By the way, this discussion I had on the Anglo-Saxon site was at least a month ago. About six weeks ago, even five weeks ago. I wanted to prepare something to put together like this. The Gwissi, uh, named Wissi, became Wessex, became Wessex. Now this causes a major problem, you see, because if you have the the West Saxons, they're not West Saxons, they're not Saxons, they're actually Gwissi, then who the heck are they? One theory is if you look in the Welsh history, you'll see there's a land grant given to um, some Irish. Possibly they had some flooding, lost some land, some of that, and he stuck them over there, the other side of the seven out of the way, and they've got their own bit. As it turns out, it's a bad idea, because if you read Chris Barber's work, fighting the Gwissi for hundreds and hundreds of years, if land was granted, probably go down as an error, okay? So hang on, I'm talking about a map, you can't see it, sorry. This is why I need the producer on the cakes next time, all right? When I talk about a map, when it's on the screen, you can press the right button. Okay, sorry about that. Gwissi here. Some maps that you see will show Gwissi, and they'll show West Saxons. But the term Wessex seems to come from Gwissi. Wissi, Wessex. Now this really throws the cat amongst the pigeons, if you think about it. Because who's the most famous person from Wessex? We've got Wessex culture for a start. you got Alfred the Great. There's actually very little um, about Alfred the Great, if you look through the records. He's got his own account, supposedly. And he got those um, written by the... Oh, my brain's a bit slow today. Asaf. Uh, Asa, Asa, sorry, Bishop Asa from Wales. But anyway, apart from that, it's not an awful lot. Okay, so if this is, my argument was, if this was Gwisse long before it was uh, Saxon, and it could go back to 500 BC or something, how do you know the stuff there is Saxon? Particularly how do you know it's Anglo-Saxon? doesn't make any sense at all, does it? So what we have, boop, 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 boop is we had a really interesting discussion, okay? And this stunned me. And I think it's going to stun you. This is the Anglo-Saxon culture. Okay. So we're, this is I'm basically giving you the background on the, um, the conversation, all right? And this is sort of where we got to, okay? Very nice chap. Right. So I was saying that how do you know it's Saxon? How do you know it's not older? You can't date this stuff anyway. Most of it's inanimate. The dating's rubbish. It's supposed to be the Gwissi area, not the Wessex. It, it, all that stuff we just gone through. This is his wonderful reply, okay? Now, where this is, obvious, this is obviously a well-recognised issue is in the use of the term Anglo-Saxon. In many cases, we find that the people buried with Anglo-Saxon objects are not necessarily wholly or even partly of Germanic, rather than insular descent. So they might not even come from Germany. They might be insular. They might be local. SI analysis can help you. It's where you have to, don't let jargon put you off, right? When you talk about SI, it's, um, it's looking at things like, uh, can you find any trace of food in the body? You look at the teeth composition, and what you try and do is work out the diet. So if there's salt, well, they look for solarium and somtium, various rare elements, if one of those is in my teeth, that means I must have eaten a lot of rice. I was probably from China and not from South Wales. Okay, that kind of thing. So don't let, don't let it put you off, right? Just ask, what is, what's SI analysis? What, what's this? What's that? Anyway, but it only indicates where somebody might have grown up. It doesn't matter where I'm from. If that stuff's in my teeth, it only shows where I grew up, okay? Or in my bones even, okay? <laughs> not where their parents or grandparents came from us. So this is spot on, right? This guy's being really honest. I take total respect. Take my hat off to him, okay? Unless you happen upon a first-generation migrant. So I've just come over. Unless, it, unless I've just come over, it's not going to be much use to you. If you spend all your time eating foreign food, they're not going to find much uh, British genetics in you, okay? So being able to extract DNA, there's another can of worms, from the skeletal remains, adds to this picture. By the way, there's really very few bodies being done. Well, that's another subject. As this picture, and has shown us that the material culture we think of as Anglo-Saxon, and there's no doubt that it's, it's a distinctively Scando-Germanic material culture, we'll come back to that, 
rather than one which evolved from existing insular cultures, was adopted by people who seemingly had no recent Germanic ancestry. Isn't that amazing? So in that respect, the use of the term as part of the title can be seen as inaccurate, or at least incomplete. There's only so much space in the front of the book. So, this is basically not Anglo-Saxons. They don't, they don't, they are, they're assuming, and it's a massive assumption, that a couple of generations ago, um, they must have migrated and left this stuff. Well, that's a huge assumption. Because there's no DNA to show it. There's no... Um, the SI stuff they do, you can't find any trace elements from Scandinavia. What on earth is Anglo Saxon about them? Doesn't it seem far more likely that they're Kwisay, right? So I think I wrote some polite, hopefully, on those lines. Oh, yes, it's me now. Oh, oh, I'm trying to hide his name. Do you want to see that? Ah, please don't look at his name. It's not fair on him. Uh, so I say thanks again for explaining the process in detail. It's the first time I've been able to get my head around how it works. It's like a college course. Yes, he's brilliant, right? There's loads of conversation. He really was good. Could you expand on this a bit, please? Does it mean that the people are definitely Seymour? Oh, definitely Germanic. That's kind of it, I think. Does it mean that people are definitely Germanic? No! It doesn't mean they're Germanic. All right, this is freaking me out. Where does it be possible to establish the genetic makeup of people from 6th to 7th century burials. Now, they're saying this, they are they are sticking their thing, this thing is 6th to 7th century, okay? Now, it's almost certain the Saxons did not get that far west during the 6th century. They might have got there in the 7th. And it seems to be when the Kwisse start to disappear. But that, that's like 8th, 9th century at least. To me, it would seem highly unlikely that they're Germanic, okay? This is how it works, though. They are not... They are not genetically Anglo-Saxon. Using uh, Anglo-Saxon as a convenient shorthand to describe the Germanic people from Northwestern Europe. Even though this, this, this just blows my mind. They are culturally Anglo-Saxon. What does that mean? I've got a German car. Does that make me an Anglo-Saxon? I've got a Volkswagen. Oh my God, I'm a fascist, you know? i.e. they are buried in furnished, furnished bed. Now this is a bit, I need your help everybody please. Furnished burials using objects that in their form, method of use and style of decoration etc. are distinctly Germanic. Are they really? Are they really? What is so Germanic about the items that are being found? That is what I want to know. I want to buy the book just to see a list of items and what's blasted Germanic about them. I did push things a little bit too fast. I said, well, what is Germanic about the items? They basically said, buy the book. All right. So if someone wants to get me a birthday present, a little bit early, but who's counting, eh? Um, that's what I want for my birthday. <laughs> it's a stupid book, all right? Um, shouldn't say that. I'm sure it's wonderful. But what I did find was this. This actually going to the, the government's. <gasps> I'm going to get in trouble now. It's government, government, that horrible, scary crown thing, white on black background, which incidentally changed in recent years. It's not the same crowns it used to be. Conspiracy theory people, you'll love it. I'll have a close look at the crowns. Anyway, um, <laughs> I haven't, by the way. I just noticed they changed. Because I used to work for the crown, because I used to pay the bills to the job centres. Nothing major, just a job before I went to university, okay? The bills came to me, I paid the checks. It's interesting, though. Slight detour because um, what would happen is some job centre out in Kid, uh, Kidwelly, I was always one I used to deal with. If you ring it up and you say, like, oh, no, no, my gas has been turned off, you haven't paid the bill, or, um, you know, I, I, I was pretty good. They might not have sent it in time. But sometimes you get like a window cleaner or something saying, I haven't been paid for two months, I'm owed whatever it was, 50 quid in those days. If you don't pay me, I'm going to sue you. And I used to say to them, as I was told to say, you can't sue me, mate, because. Um, I am the crown. <laughs> I am, he wears the crown. No, I am the crown. You can't sue me in a British court because the crown is the court and you can't use the crown to sue the crown. There you go, folks. How's them onions? <laughs> I said, don't worry, I'll get you paid, all right? <clears throat> I did enjoy the job, but that was my um, time working for, um, I don't know, what, what do they call them? 
It's always double speak, does my head in. I call it the unemployment office. It's probably called the employment office or something like that. Anyway, uh, sorry, diversions. Some people like them. Inside, whatever, the DIO, whatever that means. Here we go. Launch of new book on excavations at Barrow Clump. This is the key name, Barrow Clump. And uh, this is January 2020. This is quite hot news, okay? This is right up to lockdown time. Look at this. They're still digging. They're still finding more and more and more and more and more stuff. I want to see more and more of the stuff, all right? And they've got uh, Historic England and Wessex, Ar Wessex, Wessex Archaeology. I love to go up to the Wessex people, Wessex Archaeology Group and say, you know, you're not Angles or Saxons. You might be Irish, actually, but you might be something as foreign or different. Not Saxons, pretty certain. The Wessex Club is a protected schedule monument and an early Bronze Age burial mound that later became the burial place for Anglo-Saxons. See? We go from early Bronze Age and just, whoop! Forget British history. Whoop! Forget the Kwisse. Whoop! They all disappears. I'm going to exercise Beowulf. <laughs> Hilarious, isn't it? Um, mind you, Wilson and Blackett say that Beowulf was actually the story of Gilgamesh, and it's a British story, because there's no extant or versions of the Beowulf story anywhere in Germany or Scandinavia. I mean, oh my God, I'm right out of time. I've got no one to do yet. Right. <coughs> so anyway, so these wounded, sick, wounded. Uh, good for them, I guess. Brilliant, as I've already said. And uh, they got... Heavy vehicles, farm vehicles, because of course Salisbury Plain, you know, they're always letting off rockets and shooting each other there, aren't they? So here we go. This is what I can find here. So we've got a sword, spear, pin, belt, and knife. Now apparently this makes it Germanic. It's a Visigoth. And it's a Visigoth brooch. Whether that's going to be traded, or other people made similar brooches, or whatever. Who knows, eh? That's enough, apparently. That makes it German. But I'd like to see more of the other... Um, yeah, i like to see more objects, please. So that's like to get through on that one. <coughs> and there was something else I was going to say on this uh, subject. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I'm going to not cover everything tonight. I'm going to make more videos during the week, though, right? Short live ones. I hope to do one Wednesday, a live stream. I spend a bit more time on some of the subjects to get to do tonight, because there's loads, right? <coughs> uh, where this ties in... Hang on a second. I haven't got the graphics for this ready. Are we back to me again? Yep, I think so. See me. Come on, why is it? Yes, here we go. Is this again ties back to Sutton Who, all right? Now, if you remember in various of the books, it's repeated again in the Trojan War book, and I've updated all the images. It's very nice. And it's all about the, the Sutton Who treasure. And Alan Hassel did the great work on this, and Wilson and Blackett reported it in their book and took it a bit further, and I'm reporting on their work. Taking a bit further, so we actually do academia, and it's how the mainstream academia is supposed to do it. Anyway, when I put up my video a while ago, saying, "Do I look, um, do I look Saxon on the Sutton Who um, mask?" I had a good discussion with a lot of people in the Anglo-Saxon group. Again, it's great. It, it, it please, I, I encourage you to go there, have a look, and my thanks and gratitude to them for being so polite and explaining. They're very genuine people, particularly Marie, who runs it. They really are sincere. And they're not as dogmatic as we sometimes come across with some academics, particularly in Wales. <coughs> hey, the point was the helmet shape. If you remember, it's got moustache on it, which I was talking about. Is, is take, I'm going to tell you the talked about. Is, the, um, is to look at what they say is the justification for it being uh, Saxon is the helmet, what's called a Vendel helmet. Look this up. Have a look. Wikipedia, Google, wherever you like. Or do some proper research. <laughs> Sorry, it's just me trying to be funny. V-E-N-D-E-L. It's a Vendel-style helmet. Therefore, it is German or Germanic. Really, right? Well, the guy in there was actually from Belgium. He, was, he wasn't he was most polite. But anyway, he was a uh, big thing about this. So let's see all the images of all the other Vendel helmets and see if you can make a comparison and work out uh, which one looks most like Sutton Who, or if it doesn't like the others, okay? And then a strange thing happens. How many Vendel helmets do you think have been discovered? I think in an average army, small war band, 500. Decent army in those days, four or 5,000. Massive army at the Great Saxon Horde, or what's it called, the Heathen Horde. Could be 20, 30,000 even, okay? They weren't the enormous armies in those days, we don't think. Maybe they were, who knows? 
Yeah, it was about six anyway. <laughs> Save you guessing for too long. It's about half a dozen, right? And the funny thing is that uh, nearly all of them are found in Britain. <laughs> so how does that work? The only uh, real site, it's like boat shaped burial mounds. They, they don't exist in Europe. You know, they say, oh, it's a boat shaped burial mound. So, who, therefore, it's Scandinavia because they have boat shaped burial mounds. Well, there's only one I can track down so far, which ties in with the Vendel thing again. And as there's only one, it might just have been a British person who's doing some sightseeing in, uh, well, it's kind of about Denmark. I guess it's sort of Finland or Sweden. I'm not quite sure where the borders exactly are. I think it's to do with Vendel as well. Um, so if you look at it, <laughs> it's, just, it's just a farce. Have a look at Vendel helmets. Maybe I've got that wrong. I mean, that's what I was being told by the group. So I said, oh, I've got hundreds and hundreds of pictures here. So open up hundreds of pictures. There's only ever been six. I went and tracked them all down. Most of them are found up by York Way and that kind of thing. And then another crazy conversation took place, all right? Because a similar situation happened again, where they said, well, if you think it's British, this guy wasn't as pleasant, by the way, as uh, our good friend who helped with the last thing. If you think it's British, where's your examples? Where's your archaeology? And it's like, exactly! <laughs> the ones, uh, the only time they do archaeology where they think it's not British. And I said, we've got loads of burial mounds and there's loads of stuff being found. And I'm sure there's going to be tons of helmets in there or being found in there. And who knows how many match of helmet helmets, Vendel helmet style. But I tell you what, there certainly don't seem to be any Vendel helmets in the Germanic countries. Isn't that weird? Is that weird or what? So before we even go on to certain royal details, like the metal rivets, rather wooden dowels that Germanics use, and then we've got the script and all sorts. And I'm going to do a follow-up. Another one on the massive lengthening to-do list, all about Sutton Who. Sutton Who to... And it's going to be called Now Do I Look Saxon, my little jokey cartoon. Because you know that beautiful um, gold and silver helmet, which is just amazing to look at with the big eyes. and It looks so um, evocative. That's the word, isn't it? Evocative, this amazing image. Um, that's a replica. <laughs> that's not it. <laughs> and if you look at... Go on, have a look. I, I, have a look. It's amazing. That's not the real helmet. You look at the real helmet. All I've got... There's a few bits, which they've kind of worked out where it roughly goes together. And most of that decoration and everything else has been added to give you an idea what the real one would have looked like, according to them. So when you see some Germanic, supposedly Germanic symbols on it, or certain styles are only seen in certain areas, well, yeah, that's because the, the artist who basically made it up and invented what it should look like, decided it was Germanic, and made it look Germanic. So there we are, this is what we're up against, folks. Oh, I, it's going to go on a little bit longer, but um, because there's another, another, it's so related to this cover-up thing. Uh, what was it? The Roman thing. The Romans, the Romans, the Romans, the Romans. Staffordshire Horde I want to go on to as well. Anyway, have a look at Staffordshire Horde. I'll try and talk about that next week, because it's not one I've learned about much yet. Another lovely book on my Christmas wish list. I've got the begging bowl out, because I can't afford to keep buying all these books. Um... I, I, <laughs> Staffordshire, I, I think, judging by the dates and everything, they seem very unlikely that that's, um, oh, hang on, you can't see what I'm talking about. Give me a nudge next time, on. What you see is, um, the Staffordshire hoard here, this Anglo-Saxon treasure, which, um, <laughs> I don't know much about this, all right? I'm not going to stick my neck out or pull a 50 quid on it or anything like that. But from what I do know, the dates and where it's found, it seems very unlikely that it's uh, Anglo-Saxon either. Sad, isn't it? Sad or exciting? Let's think it's exciting. Because I think we can prove this one. And Sutton Who. Not that anyone's listening <laughs> or interested. I saw some chat at the corner of my eye about talks. Thank you very much, Paul Buchanan, for mentioning talks. Things around your neck. T-O-R-C, as I was corrected, which is the British spelling. But you also see T-O-R-Q-U-E, which is like the physics talk thing. So I'm... I've got to get to this last thing. I'm like, all right, hang on. Bear with me. You're going to see all my stuff. I've got to open. See how complicated it is doing this because i got tons. That's the launch of the new book. We just talked about that. Ah, yeah, here we go. Well, I am doing well. Not really. Roxeter. Roxeter. Is that what you say? Roxeter. Roman city, okay? Now, the thing with Roxeter. What I love about this research on Roxeter. Right, I've got to get some background again, okay? If once again, we've got a friend of ours, 
uh, Mr. Tomlinson, who does a good job, I have to say, he runs an organisation or a group called, uh, it's called Roman Walks on Your Doorstep, or Roman History on Your Doorstep. You, you come to our group, you, you post fairly regularly with walks and, of course, with the lockdown, he <laughs> can't do a lot of walks, so he's posting other stuff. And it goes on a conjecture of things being Roman, all right? Because, uh, and this is where it ties in with the last one I was talking about. And I thought uh, the original entry open. I had too many things open. Anyway, okay. So we had this one here, and it was called something like The Life and Death of a Roman City, something like that, okay? And, yeah, Life and Death of a Roman City. I think there's a new book out about it. Um, yeah, I haven't got the book open. It doesn't matter. You look at that. The point was, it's a Roman City, it's a Roman City, it's a Roman City, okay? So as always, I said, oh, that's very interesting. I always ask the question, what's Roman about it? Not being rude. What makes you so confident? It's Roman, all right? It's a fair question, I think. So, I this link was posted. Here you have it. Here's the research on Roxeter, the Roman city. All right? I'm one of those annoying people. If you tell me it's in a report, I read the report, okay? Same with all the other things going on at the moment. We won't do any current politics, but I think you know what I mean. Right. There was little research of any kind at Roxeter to the 19th century. Before then, the survival of the old work Basilica Wall was recorded in Camden's Britannia. And this name jumped out at me just that second when I read it then. I need a light. Would you put the light on, please, I? Need put the light on because I wanted to do my little bit. Da, da, da. See how you will see how far back some of these. They are 17th century Camden, alright? Yeah, I am right. I am right. I just spotted that connection right now. How about that for serendipity? Synchronicity, whatever term you like to use, because the thing I was going to talk about, Cambria, mentions this bloke, Camden. So remember the name Camden, right? He wrote a book called Britannia in the 17th century, which is really, I would say, a crucial book as a marker for when history started to change. And if you go right back to the beginning of the programme, there is some... What's the word? It's not madness. Logic behind the madness. There is some structure to these programmes, honestly, really. Go right back to the beginning. Talked about um, the changing of British history with the arrival of the Hanoverians. Well, one thing I found interesting, it actually started a little bit before then. So maybe the Hanoverians is part of the process. Then it's curious because the Stuarts like Charles II, who's mentioned in the front of this uh, Cam Cambria Triumphants book, were relying on British history, and they were relying on the fact that their heritage through Scottish kings, and the Scottish kings came from Wales originally. Yeah, sorry, Scots, we don't like that, but that's that's the connection, why the James and the Stuarts and all them, right, the Charlies and all those, is because they're Welsh heritage. That's another story. So something seems to be happening already about the politics. I want to cover this Rome really quickly. Because <clears throat> the point of this was, you can read this yourself. Just go to english-heritage.org.uk. You seem to be doing a quite a thorough job, especially compared to Cadu. But there again. As if you're English, if you're proper Floiga, and you really are interested in the history that's not Saxon or Roman or Norman, you are moving, losing out just as much as the Welsh are. Ireland's rallying back. Ireland is recovering some of its ancient history. So is Scotland. Wales and England, both, both are being deprived of history, not just Wales. You say, oh, it's nationalistic, Welsh flag. No, 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 no. Wales and England and Scotland and Ireland have all lost their history and the Bretons, all right? And if you go through all this here, right, you can have a quick scout through a uh, fragment of 14th century mosaic, all this kind of stuff, okay? It's on and on. That was destroyed by visitors. This is it. this mosaic. I'd love to see that. Because there's a rumour that the mosaic showed a British scene, not a Roman scene. And that's why it was destroyed. Ah, you don't see that in this report. Anyway, okay, so blah, blah, blah. All about the bath, all about everything else. Look at this, isn't it wonderful? They could have plumbing and they could do great things. The forum, excavation, all that. I read the whole thing. You can have a read as well yourself. Please do. Uh, it's it's Interesting articles, not that badly written. There's no mention of why it's room. There is... Oh, hang on. 
I'll do it again. Sorry, I thought it was on screen. It wasn't. Um, let's try again. So this is the research on Rochester, Roman City. So it's the EnglishHeritage.org.uk, okay? So um, here it all is. So I was talking about personally, you couldn't see what I was on about. Here's Camden's Britannia, right? Camden's Britannia, written in the 17th century. All right, come back that second. Go through it all. It's not too long. Cut the pages. Please read it. We've got to inform ourselves and have proper discussions. Find sources. Show me where I'm wrong. It's great. People show me I'm wrong all the time. I don't have a problem. It means I've learned. I had something wrong. Now I've got something right. Or until the next time I'm proven wrong, okay? So you won't upset me by saying that. Okay, so go through it all. And then post-Roman period. There's no real thing anywhere to show... Um, it's actually Roman. And this is the link I was sent. And then uh, I said, I said, well, I just read the whole report. I can't. And he, Ryan's a nice bloke, right? I said, I can't see anything um, to say it's Roman in there. He said, oh, well, we're just starting to scratch at the surface. So, like, when we're just starting scratching at the surface, how do you blank, blank, know it's Roman? <laughs> it's like that other one. We haven't heard from from uh, about a year now, which is, do you remember the fort in the wood? Very similar situation again. Search for Fort in the Wood. You find it on uh, Facebook. Uh, I think they've got a website as well. They opened up the thing about a year ago. Wow, we're so excited. In this area near Wigan in Lancashire, we were digging away or whatever they were doing, and they found a stone wall. It's so exciting. We found a Roman fort. <laughs> it's like, how do you know you found a Roman fort? They didn't like the question even. Got very, very, very defensive. So what you found is some stones in the ground. How do you know they're Roman? You haven't found a wall yet, and there they are. They've got a little Lego Roman soldier on the website going, hey, you know. And, and, and you read the, their own information, which just drove me crazy. It was like, this is an area of um, England, northwest of England, around Wigan. We did not even know the Romans had been here. We didn't know it was strategically important. So you, think, so you don't, so you've got all these Roman records about where they put their legions and where they went and where they fought battles and what they did. This isn't on the list. So probably it's not Roman then. No. Therefore, we need to rewrite the Roman history. <laughs> rewrite what we know about the Romans. Ah, oh, you can see why Alan Wilson despairs, can't you? Anyway, this last little thing, just to finish on. I can really do the pair of glasses, because it's a bit small, some of this writing. There we go, my little rant for the week. What struck me, okay, now, in there, uh, this is cracking, right? Cracking! I'm getting a bit more Cardiff over the years. I don't know why I don't even live in Cardiff. I think he's hanging out with Tim, who's the poshest Cardiff boy I've ever met, but still. Right, there's the, um, my good mate Tim, right. So the, the story, we're going back to me, yeah, right, back to, we are back on me. It's lovely, it's so well written, honestly, it's, a, it, it's, it's, ah, I can't believe the book's like 340 years old, whatever, 1661, that's why it's important, okay? Now, the story he tells him here, so I was going to do it in more detail, I'll skip through, you all know it anyway, was Brutus came over around about 500 BC or whatever, and he, Ended up running the whole of Britain. Explains how it happened. It's in here. So when those people are zapping me on Facebook, oh, you believe in all that stupid stuff that Wilson of Blackett did? I say, one name is much earlier. Yeah, yeah, all those idiots like Yolo Moganu invented that around about the 1800s. Well, this book's written 1661. So they're the idiots inventing it. And before them, there's other books. And it's in Shakespeare. And it's in all sorts of things. So anyway, this idea that Troy's a myth and the whole thing's a myth. Again, coming back to original theme, the new book. Why Trojan was important explains a lot of this stuff. Right, so three sons, Locrinus, Locrinus becomes the king of England, and that's where Floiga comes from. Remember the map I showed you? Showing it in Welsh, England's still called Floiga. Da -da 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 -da. Come on. Right, almost, thank you, on. That's it, get the map on screen. Excellent, that's excellent. All right, so you got uh, Floiga, which comes from Locrinus, the son, and then you got Albinactus, I think the full name is. So you check that, I think it's Alban Actus. He's a Scottish dude. And then you got uh, the Cymru here, right? Who's named after Cymru. And what we have is a Hun. They call them Huns here, which I find really interesting. Because this would be way back, way back, way back. So 400 odd, even 500 BC, the Huns are supposed to come in through here, up, no, up north somewhere. I'm not sure exactly where, all right? But they, and they've attacked. Uh, at Alban, and they killed the Scottish guy. They killed Albalactus. So, 
uh, he's around this area, and he's starting to build a kingdom. And uh, Locrinus, the, the English one, he's starting to get a bit worried, right? He's like, we got for one, he just killed my brother. And and these these brothers are very close. They've travelled across the world together and set up new kingdoms. They're not rivals. They are closely bonded brothers. Remember that, England, Wales, Scotland, closely bonded brothers, okay? Till a sax has turned up. <laughs> anyway, so he's getting an army to go up there and give the Huns a good kicking. And the King of Cymru, Cimbria, Cimbria is his cousin, or brother, sorry, he joins forces. The two of them go up. They have a massive battle up in the Humber. <gasps> so my geography's been shown up. Was that one or that one? I think one's the T's, one's the Humber. Anyway, there's a hole in it. Yes, it's that one, I think. Anyway, it's in the Humber. Uh, uh, and the reason it's called the Humber, this is interesting, is because the leader of the Huns, his name is supposed to be Humber. Guess what? <sighs> Humber. H-U-M-B-E-R. And they beat won the battle, and he drowned in the river Humber, which still carries his name today, which is pretty remarkable, isn't it? Because it is still there, and it is still called the Humber. Now, I'd like to just quickly recap that story, because this, this could be Alan Wilson writing this in 2000 and whatever, rather than 1600, whatever. And what it says here is, they're talking about cover-up. Remember the theme tonight, why history suppressed? Mr. Camden, I'm quoting now, right? Mr. Camden, remember we saw his name on the um, English Heritage thing, right? About the research on the Roman stuff. Mr. Camden, in his Britannia, setteth down these two distinctions, but speaks not a word of the cause or the battle. And the reason is easy to be imagined. For should he express the death of Albanac, King of Scotland, and the revenge of Congrin, Loch Lochrin and Camber on behalf of their brother, he must needs grant Brut, or Brutus that is, to be progenitor of the Britons, and consequently of the Welsh, a nation which are very little beholding unto him. So even back in the 1660s, whoop, and you say earlier, uh, this, this part of history was starting to be suppressed. Because one of the reasons is, it shows that the English and the Welsh and the Scottish, actually, are separate. Slightly different with Scotland, because at one, some point there was an act of union and all that kind of stuff. There's never been any kind of uh, link up with Wales. So there you go. All right, well, I think we'll finish on that one. I've sailed over only by a quarter of an hour. Hope everyone enjoyed that. Um, I can see lots of... Uh, tell you what, so a little, little scan through some of the comments. This has been going on. Can we just uh, scrub a bit then? Let's have a look. Here we go. Wow, there's loads of mist. <laughs> uh, I can see a map a while ago and it had the Welsh Prince of Scotland on it. Oh, yeah, well, that'd be the Strathclyde, wouldn't it? Thank you for that. That's Patrick Jones. Uh, Arnie, oh, right, thank you, Arnie. Um, Canada is 98% 98, 98 crown land. Yeah, isn't that remarkable? Oh, there's Monica. Hello, Monica. Good to see you on there. Romani could refer to Romani. No, she says later Romans could Oh, yeah, that makes more sense. Sorry, yeah, that's my mistake there. Oh, don't we, Ronan? Romans. Romans refers to Romani, one of the great four tribes of Britain. Uh, Gwyddel, Flichtig, Brithion, Scuti, and Romani. That's a very interesting point, Monica. Yeah, yeah, I can see a lot going for that. The more I look into this, and this is, <laughs> it's almost like thinking the unthinkable, is, um, are the Cymru and the Romans <coughs> <they're> the same? <laughs> the same people. And all I'm moaning about, I mean, it's bloody Roman. It's actually maybe be this, because it's British. <laughs> but don't forget, you've got the Etruscans to throw into this. And the Etruscan is a Welsh word. And is anyone out there more educated than me on Roman history? I thought I was pretty good on Romans. But what, I've got a book here. Uh, I'm going to have to dive into the mainstream a bit. I'm going to try and read this. I was really hoping you would have lots of Etruscan writing. So thanks to my friend. Can you see me? Oh, you can't really. All right, thanks to my friend uh, Dave Cook. Who's lent me this? I was really hoping there'd be lots of Etruscan writing I could try and read because I am now following the Colburn Trail, following the work of Wilson and Blackett, and Etruscan's going to be next on the list. It's not difficult. 
It's writing. It's designed for children to learn. It ain't meant to be difficult. If they tell you it's really difficult, they're doing it wrong, all right? So yes, Monica, I think the reference as well is in the old books. It does refer to the, the four tribes of Britain and the Romans being one of them. So yeah, yeah, Romany. What else we got here? The Vikings became the Normans. They were pirates. This is Monica again. The Franks were the Merovingians. Arthur fought the hell out of the Quethel Flickety, the Picts. Ha ha. <laughs> Very good, Monica. Yes, Arthur did too, did fight the Picts. Which I uh, am just coming on to those parts of the book, Arthur the War King, and that massive campaign up into Scotland. Brilliant book. Um, I've really enjoyed reading it out loud. We have it in the evenings. That's a bit of a gap. I apologise to Arnie. Get back onto it this evening. Start reading them again. And I'm going to put more audios up. I was going to make it into an audio book that people could buy, but it's going to be difficult because the first, I think I'm on, well, I've recorded about eight, nine chapters. And I think already, though, after about five or six chapters, it's up to eight and a half hours. And my little CDs, I use my discs, audio discs, do about 60 minutes each. <laughs> so I have to send out like 20 discs. So uh, maybe memory sticks or something? If anyone got any ideas on that? I wanted them on CDs and just slap them in the car, can't I? But I'm sure people's cars are way more advanced than mine. My German car, which is now 200 and something thousand kilometers. Uh, miles, miles, miles. Going strong. Very good car. Schöne uh, Wohn. Uh, no, I've got my German. Oh, my goodness. Right, anyway. The, the answer to last week's question was... <laughs> oh, no. What was the question? I wrote it down. Thank you, Alan Reese. Yeah, yeah, that would have been cruel, wouldn't it? Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my goodness. And I've got to do it all from memory now because I, I forgot to prepare for this. Yeah, I remember. It's Richard. Richard Evans. You did give me... I did have a quick chat with him in the week to try and remind me. So, oh, I think he sent me a message. Richard, we were meant to talk and go through all this. So I actually remember. <laughs> anyway, yeah. I was asking if anyone remembers that uh, I still thought... I still thought one of my great claims to fame as a child was winning an Eisteddfod for, for poetry. I was bard of the gadair, which means the bard of the chair. So the sitting does come into it. But anyway, what we're saying with Eisteddfod, and tell you st oh, hang on. I want to start the story last, so hang on a second. Glan, because I had another question for this week. Glan Gee is Old Welsh Cornish Greenfields. Anything else there, Arnie, I need to jump into? Black Bart Roberts is the most successful pirate of all time. But the made all the others look like weekend defenders. Who's that? Andrew Wheeler. <laughs> well, I think there is another another Welsh pirate called Captain Morgan who did rather well as well. He ended up uh, running the whole of Jamaica, didn't he? Those Black Morgans, Beard. man, from the Morgan, the Morgans. I mean Blackbeard. Blackbeard. Thank you, Arnie. That's the one, yeah. Candlebeard. Candlebeard, yeah. Old, uh, well, that's supposed to be Edward Teeth, I think, wasn't it? Wasn't it Edward Teeth? No, Blackbeard's Edward Teeth, wasn't Pardon? it? Blackbeard was Edward Teeth, I think. Yeah, but he owned Jamaica, didn't he? I think it was Captain Morgan, I think. I don't know. There we are. Oh, yeah, I have to check that now. See, Arnie's usually right on these things. I have to check it. Oh, I thought his teeth was there. Uh... Well, I don't know about pirates of all people. One of the reasons is we think they might tie in with Phoenicians. I just like pirates. Who doesn't? Which boy never liked pirates, okay? I'm sure Pentley Gills do too. Right. What was last week's question? Yeah, I said for... Right, I don't do any more comments on this. Sorry, because it's going to be miles over. I said I only do an hour. Ah! So much to... Mm. There's loads I mean, gone on to, right? So what we look at instead... I don't have it written out instead anyway. Oh, no. Ice. Instead of looking at E-I-S, where it gets interesting if you look at it as A-E-S. Phonetically the same, right? Ice. Tev. Vod. Tim Lewis, where are you when I need you put the answers on? Hey, look at the word A-E-S, and it's very strange. So you get the old dictionaries out. And A-E-S is there with variations and lots of words and no translation. Usually you see the Welsh word, English word, Welsh word. Ice not translated. Very, very mysterious word. Okay. We also get into the, the Tevfod part of it. Well, Arnie's lost my broadcast. Don't worry. It's okay. Um, and what it seems to be, I, I don't have a full breakdown here, uh, but what worked out, Richard Evans and Tim Lewis worked this out really clever stuff, was that it's the it's effectively a travelling court. It's the place where we do the laws. That's what the Eisteddfod seems to be. Like there's some sort of travelling uh, law court. 
Now, if you remember the other half of the question, it ties in with tabernacle. And tabe is like the flowing cloak or something like that, which uh, in the old Welsh, tabor, tabor. And then na, I don't know, see, the, the, the rest of the word's hard to translate, but um, I, I would think maybe na is not, and cluck and candle or something. So it's a tent without light or something like that. Now, the reason they tie in together is, um, yeah, this is quite, it gets quite clever now. You see to the end, you always get a little gem at the end, right? This is a great one. And I can't really claim this. This is Richard's, right? Well, I'm, not I'm inclined to claim it. Well, I guess I can't really. So we've got ace, not ice, sorry, ace at the beginning. A-E-S, ace, Stedford, and tabernacle, all right? Now, if you look at the tabernacle, a few strange things happen. Uh, first of all, if you're aware of Wilson and Blackett's work, suddenly, and and Tim Lewis came into this again, because he loves looking at the old tithe maps, so we can see what each field was called. There is a field called, whatever, the mice or something like that. Uh, what, what would the field be? I think it's mice. Anyways, mice at Tabor. So you've got a tabernacle field just down from uh, the Arthur's Cave. Uh, maybe I've given away too much already here. Ooh, there could be another cave there, just saying. It could be a verse. Let me do the tabernacle just there. But anyway, what I was trying to get back to, before I let, put my foot in it, was that the tabernacle seems to have travelled round with the A. Stedford. Right? And when it got freaky, right, and Richard was so excited on this, because he, he teased me then, do you know Central Cardiff at all? Because we're still trying to work out what is this word, A.E.S. A -E -S, can't find the translation for it, right? See the dictionaries? No translation given, which is weird in itself. I can't think of any other words. Don't do that, all right? Seems the only one. Maybe there's some others. I can't see any. A's. Can you think of a place in central London, Cardiff, sorry, Cardiff, with A's in the name? Er, uh, A's. Pause it. If you know Cardiff, it's, oh, you can't pause. It's live, isn't it? Uh, how long do I give people? Uh, A's. Translates into English. It's not a translation. It's a place right in the centre of Cardiff, which I've been going to all my life because it's got a wonderful uh, cafe and stuff in it. Uh, outdoors, outdoor cafe in a paved area. It's right by the St. David's Centre. So you've got the shopping mall. You've got the theatre. You've also got some of the best malls. The best bookshop in Cardiff is there. The best, they call them malls. We call them arcades. Arcades in Cardiff. You walk down and it's covered in the shops, right? So you've got the best arcade. You've got the best bookshop, you've got the theatre, you've got the mall, the shopping mall, and take David's Centre, whatever it's called, and then you've got this paved area outside, and there's usually like buskers and stuff, and it's a real kind of, uh, what's that, Hungarian people called, what are they called? Anyway, you know, it's a nice libertine kind of, bohemian, bohemian uh, place to go for sandwich. So I've, I've patched up enough time now, those I'm guessing yet, yeah, never going to get it, it's called The Haze. H-A-Y-E-S, which in English doesn't seem to mean anything, and the Hayes translation is the uh, Hayes. Uh, so maybe this was the site of the court in Cardiff. Now, where Richard got very excited and had to call me, even though he was after in a field with cows lowing in the background up in North Wales, was to say, the, if you know the Hayes, I know it pretty well, six old cars not far from there, uh, just opposite, on St. Mary Street, remember, this is the St. Mary Street, which could date all the way back to Joseph Arimathea. Uh, this could be the original church dedicated to the wife or mother of Jesus. Hard to establish exactly which one. It was all the way back there. Very, very ancient site. All you can see the original church, a little bit of wall stuck in the side of a blinking pub nightclub thing. It's a disgrace. And as you know, Joseph Arimathea's grave is nothing there at all to mark it. But the street is still called St. Mary Street, so at least it's something, all right? There is a church, a rather large church. It's like pub, 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 wham. Big chapel, big chapel. <laughs> I thought I'd give this away for free in a live stream, but there we go. What do you think the chapel's called? Any ideas? Have a guess on? Any ideas? St. Mary's Chapel. St. Mary's Chapel. That would make sense. St. Mary's Church was there originally. That was the one on the corner. Good guess. Excellent guess. 
But the modern chapel is still open to this, well, not to this day, it's still there, the building. People don't seem to go to church much, but the building's still there. Yeah, I think somebody got this. Comments? Yeah, someone's, the, I think the comments are catching me up, so cut minutes behind. Anyway, yeah, yeah, the Arthur's Cave, Pentecost. Yeah, the Field of the Cross. Yeah, we got the Field of the Cross, we got the Field of the Tabernacle, all those places around there, okay? And then right opposite, the A's. This is er A's in Cardiff. A E S. Look at the sign. I've never noticed it. Everyone just calls it the A's, right? It's er A's. A E S. This word just doesn't seem to have a meaning. Any Welsh experts can tell me what er A's means? Please, 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 please tell me and tell Richard. We'd love it to know because the church right opposite on St. Mary Street is called the Tabernacle. How about them onions? <laughs> You've got the Tabernacle right next to the A's, which could be the root of the A's uh, which ties together with the fields well. Five foot. Blew my mind. Um, I should go Richard to tell the story, but he tells it better than me because when I was on the phone, I was like, wow. Because we're also looking at three or four. This is exactly the same time as Tim and Hugh and the others were also finding out all these names for Mercher and Mertha and all that. There is so much more to do just on the names and the words alone. So please, my help list for this week. If you know more about why Maddox all over Mertha, I should have a quiz question as well, shouldn't I? Oh, I see. That was a good idea. Thank you, Alan, for reminding me. I'll try and put it up during the week, okay? Because it's, um, I want to make it a goodie. I want to make it a goodie, all right? I'm just trying to think. Is this something I didn't cover this week that I could throw in instead? No, we'll leave that for now. So thank you very much indeed. Please help me with the dates for Equinox. Please help with Madoc. Uh, what else are we trying to look at? And we talked about the Garth Observatory. Oh, this was a little bit. Uh, yeah, they're the main ones. If you can help with those. Talk about talks again. I want to talk about the migrations again. Taran Doysant. Remind me to ask me about my theory of what the Great Flood was and why I think it was a worldwide flood and how I think I might even be able to prove it. <laughs> That's way out there, isn't it? Okay, right, let's see if I can now do clever things. And if you want to carry on chatting, I might, I might, I'll keep an eye on the comments a little bit longer because we are in summer holidays now, aren't we? A little bit later, carry on. He's looking at me because he's. Huh? <laughs> Just waiting for you to go to bed yet, Anna, was all? No, 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 no. no, no. no. You got a little bit longer, okay. Let's have, um, let's go back to the beginning of the album for a change. Oh, I've done this wrong. Anyway, thank you very much, everyone. Second bite to the end. Wonderful. I really enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it. Looking forward to lots more. Uh, oh, yeah, the Mirtha stuff as well. Oh, uh, we got more updates on Lord of the Rings. We're going to be throwing those in as well, hopefully during the week. Can't do everything, so if you can provide content, some videos, whatever, I'd love to share them. Put them up there, please do. And come on, music, help me out, Baron. I'm struggling. <laughs> uh, and until next week, this is where the music's supposed to come crashing in, yeah. Like a real pro. And then we'll see you all next week. So until the next time, Hello. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so slick. <laughs> ah, you, you'll do a production next week, definitely, all right? Yes, sir. You have the music all lined up then, all right? <laughs> just won't do it. I just won't do it, okay? My computer's all laggy in it. all laggy, see? Like, oh, there we go. A bit late, Baron, but better late than ever. I think the first track's my favourite, really. Right, I'll do it again, okay? Right, so everybody, I hope you enjoyed this. So please, for next week, there's no false endings, there's nothing more new. You can switch off now, you can go, get back to your lights, whatever. If you know more about Maddox next to Mirtha, please tell me. I didn't get on to the Marurian manuscript, Patricia, sorry about that, I'll do that next week. Yolo Mugano, Marurian manuscript. Dates for Equinox. Nikki Ellis raised this. Please tell me more about it. One of the right days. Oh yeah, Kung Kelling. Everyone know more about Kung Kelling and Big Me Up Liner. Thank you, Podrick. Sorry we didn't get round to that tonight. It's not up for next week. Apparently Princess Anne is a different thing. Alright, we've got Richard Davis. Thanks, Century Maps. Ah. More, 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 more. But until next week. Thank you all for joining us. Oh yeah, Manus Dinas. That's good up during the week. Great flood, loads of stuff. And uh, see you next time. No starly, ye, good luck, and have you.
Sorry about interruption, there's more music to come. There's the video opener. And this CD needs to go for sale as well, it is available. I love these tunes. One of the comments is so many. Think I'm many cold world. Thank you again. I was going to post that translation. We'll say that next time as well. Cheers. Just read it to the comments. I'm not going to start any new subjects, right? I'll just say uh, things I missed. <laughs> Why not make that the theme? Always just play now. Yeah, I agree. This is the best one. Eh? I usually use this on the videos. <laughs> I gotta say, he, he was pointed out that Henry Morgan wasn't a pirate, he was a pirateer. He was a state-sponsored pirate, I meaning he wouldn't be executed if he caught. Rachel Ross, thank you, a Jardin says, a, a famous posh pirate. <laughs> yeah, I remember I upset him on the Francis Drake boat there in uh, Brixham. I explained that uh, Francis Drake was a pirate. <laughs> a pirateer. It can't be. You end up being a magistrate. Oh, that's a good truth, isn't it? Yeah, stay, stay safe, everyone. Thanks, Patricia. <laughs> now, be the same, Monica. Be the same. Be the same. Oh, be the same, Paul. <laughs> and that was a funny comment. I love Adrian saying that uh, Black Bart had 500 pirate, pirated 500 ships, more than the rest of the lightweights combined. He's a good teetotal temperature lad. <laughs> oh dear, right. The battle to bed now. <laughs> I'll tell you what next week. I'll leave the music running. If you want to comment, that's great. I think people are going away anyway. But uh, thank you very much, and see you all next week.
complain Don't start that again I refuse to address slaves What shocks their sense of song If you only could concede just what you mean to me Me, me, me My heart is pounding at the thought of you Bam, bam, bam Your perfume is so fine And you are always mine Polarize, no apology Scream for a new technology There's a lie in every billion that sails our If you only could see just what you mean to me, 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 my heart is pounding at the thought of you. Bam, 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 your perfume is so fine, and you are always mine. Sigh, eyes, let me be with you. There's a lot I'd like to tell you to find interested Paradise in the heart of mine is better 
that something lasts Okay, thanks everyone. It's the wind this down, turn it all off, and see more videos soon. The week. All right, thank you very much, Baron. We love your albums. Good night, everyone. No stop.